over this last year, I've been getting asked a lot to go speak to youth, people's churches, and I really haven't been moved. I've gotten people that said, hey, we got hundreds of youth out here in Texas, hundreds of youth out here in Florida, we wanna invite you. And I don't wanna feel ignorant to be like, well, I'm too good or you know, I, I can't do that because of this or that, or I'm not trying to ignore people. Again, this is us having to be obedient to the Lord. And whenever I get people, there's a small handful, like a very, very small handful that reach out, say, hey, I'm praying, just praying and asking for the leading and however God wants to move. And then there's people that are just like, boom, right? Like up front and they're like, I'm the youth leader. I'm the youth director. I'm the host of this conference. And it's just like, they're just like, bah, 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 bah. And honestly, I just don't feel the spirit of God in a lot of those times and I get it because church culture has gotten to the point where deadlines, uh, numbers when it comes to monthly and weekly growth, uh, looking over to do how much are we spending on our marketing budget. There's just so much. Obviously, I do believe it's kingdom business, but it gets to the point where it leans more on our own understanding versus the spirit of God. And I'm not here to bash on bigger churches. Personally, I just think a lot of people accelerate way too fast. The church wants to grow this fast, but they haven't developed the leaders yet and the youth and the people. It's not about just putting people in a position because it needs to be filled. It's about putting people in position because it's God. The Lord has placed them there. And I think we've gotten to a point where the world has literally come into the church versus the church coming out and spreading the gospel and coming into the world. The world should not be affecting the kingdom that we're building. The world will never affect the kingdom of God, okay? It's God's kingdom. He's in control. But when we allow the world to come into the physical church, into the building, into specific positionings, this is where there's going to be issues springing forth. What I want to be able to share today is, you know, getting asked, and that's great. I'm personally just humbling myself, thanking God that I'm being used. You know, I'm, I'm really nothing without him. And I'm, I'm really truly grateful for people asking me. So again, it's not me on this like high horse saying, wow, yeah, you know, thanks for asking. It's, it's more of like, yeah, I got to pray about it. I'm in a specific season and not everybody's going to understand the season that we're in. Okay, and I'm like I said, I'm nothing without God. It kind of reminds me of this season right now where I'm in the pasture season. Pasture, okay, just like David. David was in the pasture. You know what's interesting is David got anointed. Remember when Samuel had to go look at Jesse's sons and he was like, it, it might be this guy because he's good looking and the Lord's like, that's not it. And then they went to go seek David, search for David to anoint David. Again, David didn't come to, to where the anointing was going to take place. They came to him. The anointing comes to you when you are obedient to God. And he was there, you know, and he says this right when he's about to fight Goliath. He says, you don't know that no one knows what I was doing in private when I was fighting bears and lions. He was ready to take on Goliath. Just because David got anointed and the spirit of God came upon him doesn't mean he got the title or the position of king right away. It was over a decade plus before David became king, but he got anointed, meaning God's hand was on him. God didn't care how old he was. God didn't care, you know, what, what amazing title he had at the time or how young or, or he didn't care about any of that. What the Lord cares about is his heart. God cares about your heart. Doesn't matter how old you are. And here's the thing. I, I believe there's a lot of anointed people, people that God has anointed and they go out of God's will. They, they run in disobedience looking like a King Saul out here. That's why it says, obedience is greater than sacrifice. You can be sacrificing your time being in church. You could be sacrificing your time preaching the word of God. But if you're not aligned with God's will, that's obedience. The alignment with God is more important than the assignment here on earth. The alignment with God is more important than the assignment on earth. I wanna be aligned in God's will. Father, not my will, but thy will is what Jesus literally asked in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, let this cup pass. But if it is thy will, if it is the Father's will, let it take place. And God gives us strength that even though my flesh might be weak, I want to take that opportunity. I want to be able to go out there and share God's glory. Is this God's timing? Wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength. I think so many people, they 
they rush to the platform rather than being prepared in the pasture. People are out here slaying Goliaths way too early and they fall short and never get developed. Development, there's preparation that needs to take place. I feel like I'm still in this preparation and development season. We're always gonna be a student, but I don't think I'm ready to get onto those stages and, and go out there, to be honest. And it's not something that I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm left, I'm confident in God. If people need deliverance, if healing needs to take place, God's gonna use me. I believe in the mighty power of the Lord that it is not me, but it is Him. It is no longer I that lives, Galatians 2.20. I'm now crucified with Christ. It's no longer I that live. It is Jesus Christ that lives inside of me. God will use you for his ultimate purpose. We got to surrender into him daily. We got to continue to seek his presence. We got to be at his feet in the throne room, spending a ton of time with the Father. His plan is always greater than ours. But the question is, can you truly trust in God? Proverbs 3, 5, 6 trust in the Lord with all thy heart, leaning not on my own understanding, but I'm going to acknowledge him in all my ways. I'm going to acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct the path. There's too many people that are falling short. That's why we see leaders, pastors falling short of sin, sexual morality, exposures taking place. They got so big headed. There wasn't development. It was just like, hey, we need a position. You look like the cool hip dude. You, you're, you're ready. Boom, let's take you on. And later down the line, years, years, years down the line, they're going to fall short like Saul. Saul fell short because of his disobedience to the Lord. He was obedient in, in, in the beginning of, of his, his reign. And that's why God chose him. But he decided, he even said, I feared what the people thought. That's why he heard the bleating of the sheep when God told him to take them all out. And Samuel's like, why do I hear the bleating of the sheep? The Lord told you to take it all out. It, delayed obedience is still disobedience. That's the wrong time, right? Even the right thing in the wrong time is still disobedience. That's why it says obedience is greater than sacrifice. And I'm willing, I'm willing to get consecrated. I'm willing to wait upon the Lord. God has given me a time to be able to share on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and I'm praising God for it. And I'm just stewarding it. And I believe God tests the heart continuously. It says in Jeremiah, right? It says, I, the Lord, I search the heart but I test the mind. God will continue to test. He will continue to search our hearts. And David was a man after God's heart. God doesn't care how old you are. He doesn't care if you just got saved last month, but he's going to continue to test to see if your heart is right. He's looking for somebody that is seeking with his heart. God wants your heart. And I think too many people go too quick onto the platform. They get this ego, self-righteousness. They need deliverance. There's no spiritual covering over them. There's no pastor praying over them. I believe in spiritual covering. I believe that God will use people to lead us that are a, lot, a little bit more wiser than us as we're being raised up. It's going to be like the Apostle Paul's to the Timothys. So again, y'all, I just want to share this because... You know, people think, well, you know, maybe it's because he's not. And here's the thing. I feel like some people just haven't said anything to me because I'm like, yeah, let me pray on it. And I actually do. I just it's sometimes it's hard for me to just say, no, I can't preach there or I'm not going to go or, hey, I'm waiting on the Lord. This is this is God's will. This is God's will on my life. Again, I'm super grateful. And I think um, as we humble ourselves, the Bible says he will exalt those that humble themselves. But those that exalt themselves, he will humble. So, again, this is men and women after God's heart, a man or woman after God's heart. Just be like David, the psalmist David. Meditate on those. And I'm telling y'all, God will do it. God will do it in his time. He'll use you in his perfect timing. Wait on the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Be still and know that he is God. Psalm 46. Being still doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand still. Being still means pretty much being positioned. David was positioned. David was positioned at the pasture and he didn't have to go seek after the anointing. The anointing seeked after him. Stay diligent, stay obedient. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. Romans 12, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, and of a reasonable service. If you align all those, that is righteousness in God's eyes, holy, acceptable, and of a reasonable service. Jesus didn't come to be served. He came to serve. We're here to serve the Lord. 
We're not here to serve ourselves, glorify ourselves. We're not here to make a big name for ourselves. We're here to glorify the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is looking for some remnants that are not going to sell out because they're not sold out. God wants you to sell, be sold out for him sold out for Jesus, that I'm not here. I don't care if I'm the, on the platform. I don't care if I'm preaching on the pulpit. I'm not going to allow the platform or the stage to be an idol. I'm not going to allow the mic to be an idol because anything outside of, of serving that thing is already committing idolatry towards the Lord. Again, witchcraft, rebelliousness. This is stuff that we need to continue to humble ourselves because John 3.30 says, as I decrease, he must increase. As my spirit de or as my flesh decreases, the spirit of God inside of me will increase. J uh, Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26, he says, Lord, let it not be, Father, let it not be my will, but thy will. My flesh might be weak, but the spirit of God is willing. Pull from his strength because you can do all things through him, through Christ, who strengthens you. It has to go through Christ for the strength to come. My strength doesn't come from myself. My strength comes from God. Jeremiah 17, it says, Cursed is the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. I'm not about to let flesh be my strength. But blessed is the one that trusts in him. Who's blessed is those that trust in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Praise God. I love you guys. What do you guys think? Remember, development, preparation, if it's going to take years, if it's going to take a decade, it took David almost a de over a decade from being anointed to becoming king. Will you still keep building God's kingdom even if it took over a decade? That's where God will test. That's when God develops. And then there will be a supernatural wave, a supernatural move of God, the hand of God to be upon you, favor, blessings, anointing, walking in righteousness, healing, restoration, full deliverance that is taking place. And God will use you for the gifts that he has placed inside of you. Continue to seek God. Spend time in his throne room. I love you guys. You guys be blessed. Any other questions, drop them below. I love reading out your comments. Thank you so much. In Jesus' mighty name, bye-bye.